Do you think, Bill, some said at the time, and I'm, I'm not sure, there may still be a feeling by some, that the press there, somehow lost to, uh, Vietnam. Do you, what was your take on that? I don't think so. The television is usually what's blamed for bringing the war into America's living rooms, and people could see the horror of it. But the Army's own official history of Vietnam says it wasn't the press, but the casualties that turned the American public against the war. It also says that the press reports were often more accurate than the public statements of U.S. officials. And that President Johnson, this is in the Army's own history, and his advisors put too much faith in public relations. They were trying to fight a war which had so many contradictions that were so evident because there was no censorship, because we could go just about anywhere and see what was happening, that it was simply uh, not winnable in that sense. David, uh, you were there. Uh, you were also involved in later American conflicts and photographed them. How different was the way the press was treated and where we were allowed to go the, as to what, what we... Uh, what the rules are these days. Well, if you wanted to go to a battle, and uh, part of the problem was trying to figure out where the action was, but once you found out they were happy to take you there, you would hop on a helicopter, go into the battle. Um, the thing that I really was remarkable to me was how much the GIs loved seeing you show up. That's why we were there. We were there to tell their story yeah. of what was going on and not as a political thing. And. Uh, uh, I agree with Bill. I, I mean, the press didn't lose the war, but uh, when you started ringing up all the body bags coming back, and several from the high school I graduated from, classmates of mine, class of 65 in high school, uh, how can you win a war uh, in public opinion? If you were willing to go where the action was, to where these troops were, they, they were glad to see you. In some cases, they were just lonesome. And I, I remember my assignment was to, uh, for the Star-Telegram, was to track down kids from Fort Worth and to go and, and talk to them and do a story about them and uh, send it back home. And I'll always remember uh, a young Marine. I walked up to him, and uh, he was in full battle dress and all of that. And I said, your mom asked me to come by and <laughs> say hello. <laughs> The kid in full battle gear just broke into sobs. And uh, if, if you were willing to go where they were, uh, they, they were glad to see you. Back in Saigon, of course, uh, they weren't also always so happy to see you. What was the hardest thing for you, Bill? Hardest thing was to see the desperation at the end in the South Vietnamese who had worked for the U.S., who had worked for their own government. I remember in April of 1975, standing outside the U.S. Embassy, there were lines that went around the block of Vietnamese trying desperately to get to the consulate and get a visa to the U.S. to get out of there. Most of them, of course, did not. And they would come up to anyone, a reporter, anyone, and thrust papers and say, I worked for MACV and I did this. Uh, I need visa. Can you help me to and all I could say was, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I am sorry, because even I cannot get in there right now. The sense of abandonment by the U.S. for these people whose lives we basically controlled for so many years was one of the hardest things I've ever witnessed. We're going to take a short break, and then we'll be right back with more from our panel.